My name's Daniel Busher. We expose the three tricks of war coming up. Plans to split the whole Middle East into microstates. A policy called kill anything that moves. And Hollywood goes too far. Doesn't he ever give up? He'll not trick me into those hills again. <laughs> Fairy tales, you get caught for crying wolf. In real life, insiders laugh how people fall for false flags time after time after time. Crisis initiation is really tough. And it's very hard for me to see how the United States uh, president can get us to war with Iran. That explosion uh, on August 17th, uh, we could step up the pressure. I mean, look, people, Iranian submarines periodically go down. Someday one of them might not come up. Who would know why? <laughs> Mr. Roosevelt wanted to get us into World War II, as David mentioned. You may recall we had to wait for Pearl Harbor. Some people might think that Mr. Johnson wanted to send troops to Vietnam. You may recall we had to wait for the Gulf of Tonkin episode. I want to thank all the who are outstanding work on this issue. Trick one, repeat the lie. <laughs> White House's preferred month for invasion is March, and its weapon of choice is the New York Times. Anonymous White House official tells the Times, Iraq's buying WMD tubes. Mainstream media repeat without question, it was a total lie. On the second anniversary of Syria, anonymous White House official says Iran's buying WMD rings. Even though all 16 US intelligence agencies admit Iran does not have a nuclear weapons program. Anonymous White House official tells the Times Iraq's about to use chemical weapons. It was a lie. Anonymous White House official tells the Times Syria's about to use chemical weapons. Mainstream are repeating it without question. We're even told things that don't exist. Iraq supposedly had some chemical agent 15. It was a lie. In 2013, CIA claims a, quote, compelling case. Syria is using the same thing now. The only problem is there's no such thing as Agent 15. A leaked email says America is trying to plant a chemical weapon, which Washington says would justify invasion. We've got a new offer. It's about Syria again. Qataris propose an attractive deal and swear the idea is approved by Washington. We'll have to deliver a chemical weapon to Homs, similar to those that Assad should have. The sums proposed are enormous. Author Dr. Kevin Barrett, the same lies from Iraq. Chemicals that don't exist, they're not even trying. Americans have a terrible time even trying to imagine that their leaders uh, could ever act in a less than morally upright way. And for this reason, Americans have been repeatedly victimized by uh, leaders who have done all sorts of terrible things to America and American democracy, as well as to other countries. Trick two, we're not racist, but Iran is suing Argo director Ben Affleck. It wants to show CIA documents ordering this flick to prepare American hearts and minds to bomb Iran. These creatures cannot be considered human. Kevin Barrett, you know Iranians are portrayed like zombies from Dawn of the Dead here, but could the CIA really control Hollywood? Yes, of course, this may sound like a crazy conspiracy theory to people who are exposed on a regular basis to Fox News and, and CNN and the New York Times, which never talk about these things. But the CIA has been propagandizing the American people through the U.S. media since World War II. There is a whole department of the CIA called Operation Mockingbird. They may have changed the name, but I'm sure it's still around. Operation Mockingbird is that operation in the CIA that is aimed at dominating the media. There were, I forget, a six, seven hundred fairly high level and influential CIA assets getting paid by the CIA in the media. And uh, so it's, it's not surprising that many news articles and Hollywood movies are intelligence operations. David Swanson, also of War is a Lie, but how can a film be a war crime? Well, the, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights uh, makes it illegal to engage in war propaganda. People who have billion dollar media industries at their fingertips are not supposed to be pushing war propaganda, and that's what Argo is, and more effectively because it's not recognized as such, but it's, it's, uh, it's packed full of lies. It depicts Iranians as mad, vicious, subhuman 
animals, but one that you cited earlier of putting out false information about threats from foreign nations uh, through uh, selected misleading leaks out of the government uh, and then broadcasting those through all the, the media as if they've been created by independent reporting. This is done through cooperation with the New York Times and other key media outlets with the chemical weapons or the aluminum tubes and so forth. Uh, I mean, this is this is intentionally uh, false and misleading information aimed at beginning a war. That is, that is war propaganda. That is what is banned under international convention. Trick three, we're invading to help. Hundreds of women and babies at My Lai were gang raped, tortured, then murdered by US troops. New book, Kill Anything That Moves, finds America's army committed My Lai massacres every month. Former Marine James Fetzer, we see regular atrocities in Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan. Is Kill Anything That Moves still policy? I have no doubt about it. As a former Marine Corps officer who, however, did not serve in Vietnam, the policy was the practice, kill anything that moves. I have no doubt that's continued in Iraq and Afghanistan, no doubt at all. Reuters reports US trained proxies in Syria raping and killing women and children. 3,000 tons of weapons recently airlifted to Syrian terrorists. America's training Iran's Mujahideen e Halk, terrorists killing thousands of Iranians and Americans. Investigative reporter Madison Rupert, thanks for joining us. Who's the threat here? We see the uh, delisting of the MEK here in the United States, the Iranian opposition group. We saw mainstream reports of them actually being trained for operations in Iran uh, in the United States. So, and this was when they were still listed as a terrorist organization. So the West is really the one threatening here, uh, along with Israel, of course. Bomb Iran. America's single justification repeated again and again in Chinese whispers is a deliberately falsified quote. In fact, Iran's president called for, quote, the occupiers of Jerusalem, Israel's occupation of Palestine, the UN rules illegal, to face, quote, regime change, exactly what the US calls for throughout the world. Artist and translator Arash Naruzi, you brought the forgery to public attention. Thanks for joining us. You call this the rumor of the century. Why is the difference key? He's speaking of sort of like a velvet revolution of some kind, um, clearly not threatening to attack anybody. It's very tragic and ironic that um, the Iranian population is certainly very pro-Western and very eager to, to be a part of the international community, uh, very pro-American. Uh, it, yet at the same time, the, there's really one, only one way that you could screw that up, and that is to uh, to attack that country because it's a very nationalistic country. And uh, despite the unpopularity of the regime in power at the moment, and no one would take kindly to any kind of an attack. Splitting the oil-rich Muslim world in controllable microstates is the grand plan, says a leak from Friends of Syria talks, confirmed by top generals and politicians in Kuwait, Pakistan and Turkey. Kevin Barrett, how does the plan work? Iraq is now broken up into uh, a largely Shiite south, a shrinking uh, Sunni middle. Many of the Sunnis have become refugees and left the country. And then an Israeli-occupied Kurdish north. And likewise, Sudan has been broken up into two pieces, the uh, so-called uh, Arab uh, North and an Israeli-occupied South, which is where all the energy resources are. Interestingly, the Israelis always seem to grab wherever the energy resources are. They, they own the South Sudan and they own Kurdistan and Iraq. Uh, so uh, Libya has been broken up into a Salafi East and a Gaddafi-supporting West. So that's the strategy is to break up all these countries. In Syria, uh, would be the icing on the cake. Yeah, Al-Qaeda zapping Israel's enemies one by one. How strange. And the one country it never attacks, ever, is Israel. So <laughs> this leads you to wonder, what the heck is going on? You know, what kind of radical Islamic group is this that smuggles drugs and never attacks Israel? And whatever it does always seems to be in the interests of Israel. I think it, it's they've created a brand with Al-Qaeda that is designed to siphon off anger in the Arab and Muslim worlds. So Iran's next, who would win? Well, first, the chances are that the war would not go well for the US. This has been war game to death. For instance, the Atlantic Monthly, which is a neocon publication, 
uh, serving the interests of Israel, actually spent a huge amount of money to do a, a very, very elaborate simulation of all of the possibilities for war with Iran. And the result was that Iran wins every time. I mean, the, the only way that, that Iran can lose, quote unquote, is if the U.S. essentially incinerates all their cities with nuclear bombs. Any other outcome is an Iranian victory. So uh, it's, it's, it's a very, very uh, bad war plan, unless, of course, you're a psychotic Israeli like Kudnik, like Netanyahu, and you would be perfectly happy to nuke you know, every Iranian city. Uh, but of course, that would be a war crime that would put the U.S. Uh, out of its position as the leader of the world instantly. The whole world would, would be you know, just, just so disgusted by that, it would be the, the end of America's um, life as, as a world power. America's new backdoor to war bill forces U.S. to attack Iran if Israel decides just two congressmen voted against an anti-Iran resolution a few years back. They were Ron Paul and Dennis Kucinich, both just left office. David Swanson, you were Kucinich's press secretary. Is this backdoor to war the game changer? To explicitly give a foreign nation that power to declare war is to push the momentum out of control, out of your hands. You can't take it back anymore. That would effectively give Israel the power to declare war on Iran for the United States. I mean, this is a step way beyond. This is giving war powers to a foreign nation. Netanyahu's drive to get the public on his side with a threatening picture has gone viral. Even decision makers in Washington do feel pressured by his threats. New sex state Hegel fears, quote, Jewish intimidation. So people might be surprised who's the wolf.